Okay, let's go. Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Brian. If you're watching this, then you obviously know about my podcast, Coaching to Change. Uh, previously, I've had a podcast called Dr. Brian Speaks, and then I also had a podcast called Field Talk. Dr. Brian Speaks transitioned to Field Talk because people thought it was a little too clinical. And then Field Talk was a little too military oriented, which was fine because I support the military and the concept was for me to support uh, first responders and my fellow vets. Uh, yes, I am a veteran. I was served with the 2nd Ranger Battalion uh, Special Ops Unit with the U.S. Army. Um, did some things and I am quite proud of it. And yes, as a veteran, these are some of the things that I like to, um, you know, recognize. The thing is that the recognition with the things that I have gone through and my fellow brethren and sisters, have, well, I can't say sisters because there was no females in the Rangers. Um, now we have women serving in combat, but I've never seen it. I've never been around them. But as a veteran, there's definitely women out there who have done their part. So yeah, my fellow sisters. But the thing is, this podcast and the things that I have done and I have worked really hard on. In fact, I even left my career. Part of it was myself. Part of it was the military, the VA. They kind of felt that maybe I should consider, you know, doing something else. So with that collaboration of thinking, here I am nine years later doing things such as this. Podcasting gave me a platform for me to reach out to you. Um, education gave me a platform for me to research, learn, and do the best I can to understand. Understanding everything that I have gone through as far as this transition from being a soldier to a civilian. And as a civilian, recognizing that I just simply do not understand what the hell happened. So here I am uh, now with my third book coming out, multiple um, works of literature and hours and hours of coaching, not just others, but in general. And to all of this is just to understand how we are as people and how we are functioning because the things that we've endured over all of these years is serving in the military the things that we've seen some of us have actually done and how it affects us so right now there's this whole thing about mental health and you know this is great the awareness the um the attention that is getting is great because there was a time where this there was a stigma Nobody really wanted to talk about it. So I say that because I'm one of those who are now trying to bring more attention to this and be able to recognize the importance of mental health. So, you know, one of the things I want to do is I'm going to stop being so formal. I've been doing my podcasts and I honestly, I've been a little bored within myself. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to talk. I'm going to do the research and most of the research is just putting formality to what I already know. 
like every day I live this. So having to go and having to figure out how do I formalize this? Like I've been a coach in doing developmental health coaching for years. And then here I am now, I am actually going to be starting to get my third doctorate degree. I start in like seven days from now. I think it's seven days, the 24th, I start my first class and I'm going to eventually become another doctorate of psychology. I already have my PhD. I already have my MD, but the pursuit of knowledge just doesn't stop with me. That's a whole nother show, because honestly, there is a reason behind that. There is definitely a reason, you know, and I'm going to give you a quick, a quick snip of it. It relates to being able to control something that you can control and having that ability to control that, which means I can actually manage my time. I can manage what I learn. I have a choice that gives me the strength and the endurance to continue my education. And I just keep going and I keep going and I keep going. And I didn't understand that when I came out of the military. I was like the Energizer Bunny. I have so many letters of certifications by my, behind my name. I kid you not, I can probably do probably three quarters of the alphabet. I mean, I'm talking about Six Sigma Black Belt, Business Analyst, PMP, Project Manager Professional. I can go on and on. I was in tech. So the stuff that I've learned and got certified, put letters behind my name, ITIL, all that stuff, you know, it was all about... I mean, yeah, there was people who paid me really well for me to deliver that knowledge. But the truth of the matter is I just couldn't stop and I'm st I still can't stop. But this time I'm able to format it in a way where I can help others. And that's the kind of the path that I'm on now. I actually appreciate this, but I'm still that veteran who's struggling. So as I continue to learn and I continue to pursue knowledge, I'm constantly trying to become aware. So while I'm becoming aware of who I am and what I'm going through and why this is, not that I'm going to act like cure cancer or anything, you know, it really is not something that I don't think we'll ever figure out because we're talking about mental health. We're talking about the brain. We're talking about every single person that exists is different. And I talk about this, you know, there was somebody in my house recently. Um, I'll, I'll just be very transparent. I, I um, you know, I had this guy, him and his uh, co-worker, they came to do a, an evaluation on my roof. Um, and, you know, where I live now, the, the weather is not that great. And so, although it's a popular state, it is definitely veteran, pro-veteran, but we get the funkiest weather at the craziest times at all different times of the day. I mean, I kid you not. It's like, it'll be nice and shiny, sunny. And in my backyard, I got a golf course. And then literally like in two hours, it's raining. And then three hours later, it's back to like, it never even rained except for the water. It's, it's crazy. But anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. My, <laughs> my point is that, you know, with everything that you I'm learning and what I'm trying to do and achieve, it's all to give back so I can be able to help understand. And as I'm understanding, I'm sharing that knowledge with you so you can be able to grasp. And even currently right now, as I sit here and I struggle, one of the things that I have a challenge with is isolation. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I, I mean, I just spent whatever amount of minutes just kind of giving you an orientation. But this particular topic today is going to be about isolation. And I'm just going to talk to you. I, I have my cigar. I have my whiskey here. It's not all whiskey. I kind of mixed it with something. So I apologize. But I mean... I realized that, you know, I, I do a lot of formal talking. I do my research. I do my homework. I put everything together. I format it and I try to present this podcast, but I never quite felt comfortable with it, which is probably why I kept changing and changing my format and how I deliver. And I said, you know what? Screw this. I'm not chasing followers. I'm not chasing subscribers. I mean, surprisingly enough, I have 20 plus thousand followers uh, on or, or my uh, Instagram. I don't even know about the other ones. I just happen to go on Instagram because I like it. Um, but I have a page for everything. So just FYI, 
social media. I have everything. I have all the pages, even X, which is formerly Twitter. But I have to be myself. And to transition that into myself, part of being myself because of who I am and what I'm going through and I hate to use this word. It's not a word that I share lightly, but even suffering through, you know, is isolation. I, I, I mean, I'm going through it all the time. I mean, I'm gonna share with you something interesting. You know, first of all, if you know and have followed me and even read my first book, I mean, it's right there, Permission to Heal. Um, or I think it might even be the second book. I can't remember. The point is, if you pick up either one of those books, you're going to know that I'm all about transparency. I, I just don't give up at this point in time. You know, when I say that, I think about my friend Andrea from California. That's kind of how she talks. But anyway, um, so I come to this state and I'm here. And interesting enough, I actually have friends here. I didn't expect that, but it weirdly ironic is that some friends that are close friends people i could just knock on their door and just walk in and have a drink and have a cigar and hang out with i literally they live like seven to ten minutes from me i mean i could jump on my harley and probably be there in four i mean and i have yet to go to their house i have yet to go to their house i live on a golf course and uh, I, I'm not going to get race into this whole thing because, you know, when I was a ranger, I was like one of the very few brothers that was in the ranger battalion. So it's not about race. However, my private golf course, which, by the way, I am an equity owner of. Yes, because the company who had the golf course sold it to the private members. And yeah, I got in on that. And so this little young black guy jumped on that. And I'm owner of I'm a whatever percentage I am of this particular golf course. I'm an equity owner. And yet, as the only black guy, I don't have hardly any friends, literally. Um, the only guy who tries to be my friend, I found out, was a ranger poser, trying to claim he was with the ranger battalion. And then, of course, I busted him out because he didn't know shit about being, I'm sorry, I hope the kids are not listening. But anyway, don't lie. The point is, if you're going to lie about, he was in the military, but he lied about what he did in the military. And he got caught. I didn't go and expose him. I don't care. The point is, I don't have people I can actually talk to. I don't have friends. But that has nothing to do with the people. That's me. I'm isolating myself. So again, let's get on the topic of this. We're, going to talk, we're talking about isolation. You know, it's a state of uh, feeling alone and, and it's like without friends or help. But it's very important to understand that it is self-imposed. Okay, understand that. If you feel that you're that type of person who is, you know, just withdrawing, recognize what you're doing. You're absolutely isolating. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you because this is me. That's what I'm doing. I literally know that I am an educated man. I have studied the elements of mental health. I am technically a mental health expert. I am a developmental health coach. I am a master trainer <laughs> and I yet I still do the same stuff. You know what they say, especially with doctors, you know how we're the worst patients. It is absolutely true. Absolutely true. You know, the thing about isolation is it's a result of anxiety and depression. And that is, you know, again, you're self-inducing that stuff. So I share that because I want you to understand that if you're doing that, if you're finding yourself where you do have friends out there, or you have family members or people invite you to do stuff and you choose not to do it, you choose not to go. That's exactly what you're doing. And the thing is, it's very, it's not good. It really isn't a good thing to do. Um, just some of the elements about isolation. You know, one of the biggest, the biggest thing that you have to be very leery of is how depression could be involved with that. Now, if you are isolating yourself, there's chances are that you have depression. 
And that's a whole nother topic. And we could definitely get into that because it's a big topic and there's a lot that goes with it. But as far as isolation concern, you know, you're going to have things such as, and it relates to depression. So, and again, I talked about this before in one of my, in my second book, I think, and in probably in a couple of my articles, a lot of this stuff ties together. A lot of this stuff ties together. You know, I, I, I definitely talked about this in the second book, Mental Health, right here, the white one. And you can find it on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, any platform, it's there. But I talk about how, you know, when you're dealing with mental health, it is a very complex thing. It's very complex. And I say that because it's not just because it's a brain that involves with this and each of us is though we have all have that same organ we all have that same piece in our head that that brilliant intelligent muscle that's in there it, we all have it but the components of it the things that it processes everything that's related to it i'm not talking about nerves i'm not talking about any of the you know biological elements i'm not even talking about that stuff i'm talking about who you are as a person and what it makes up relating to you here's an example i grew up in compton if you follow me you know that i grew up in compton california southern cal okay i have two parents both my parents raised me now the thing is i could have a best buddy of mine who also grew up in compton he can even have the same skin color, same background, black guy. We all grew up in the same street, et cetera, et cetera. But he may have one parent, not two parents. That dynamic changes things. It changes what's inside you. It changes some of the decision making. It changes how you see things. My father gets up, he goes to work. He has gives this uh, role model type appearance. My mother does the same thing, gets up, go to work, and gives this role model appearance. My mom from Southside Chicago, she's very strict. My father's more laid back. His father was laid back. I remember my grandfather, very laid back. A lot of that, those dynamics change who I am. Whereas my friend, who also from Compton, also a black kid, he may have a different approach. He might be a latchkey kid. Okay, he might actually have a, a, a very hands off parenting from either his mother or his father, whoever's that one parent that's raising him. So even if we go through the same path, we're best of buddies and we're going through things, we're saying we're going to do the same thing. Decision making is going to be different. Thinking is going to be different. So if we get into a scenario, that scenario is going to impact us. When that scenario impacts us, the processing of what happened is going to change how we respond. Here's another case in point. When I was in the military, as a ranger, as a black ranger, very, very elite unit, I was one of the very few. In fact, there was only two of us that graduated in my class out of, I think, about 18 black guys who started. Class of about 35-ish, I believe. And then basically most of them quit, didn't make it past first week. A couple of us, the rest of us kind of straggled on. We dropped a few more. And by the end of the day, only two of us graduated. And the other kid that graduated, the only way he got through was because he was a basically a football standout and they pushed him to over to headquarters. He honestly couldn't even swim. I remember that to this day. It's very unfortunate because as Rangers, we like to raise the bar. But I think there's a little politics in that. But that's a whole another story. So the situation is what I'm saying is that when you go into scenarios that could be hostile or scenarios that impact your brain. So you, most of us, a lot of us, you know, we've heard the term PTSD, veterans, combat veterans are coming back with all these different uh, mental challenges. OK, each one of us will manage it differently. And the reason why we may have the common denominator of PTSD. But we're going to manage it. We're going to process it differently. Case in point is myself. I manage it differently. I have a friend of mine. I've lost that 22, you know, a day with veterans killing and committing suicide is a true thing. I have lost quite a few of my fellow vets in the Rangers. I know one, you know, I have two specifically that were very close to me. Okay. Now, why is it that I haven't done the same thing? Our scenarios are fairly similar in the military, but when you go backwards, our backgrounds are different, but yet 
we've seen very similar things. So why is it did impact us the same for him to do what he did? That is basically something he can never take back versus with me still limping along. Well, a lot of that could be because of the background. It could be because of how I was raised. It could be related to the, how I'm processing the thinking. For instance, it's not just the thinking, but it's related to how I'm approaching the scenario of what we went through. Case in point, I grew up in Compton. I told you that. If you remember, if you know anything about Compton, think about gangster rap. Think about straight out of Compton, uh, Boys in the Hood. Think about those things. Now, if you put the pieces together, you obviously recognize that I grew up in a fairly violent environment. So that means when I'm walking and I'm hearing gunshots or I'm seeing somebody get beat up, or as I was explaining to the guys who was estimating, you know, giving the estimate on my roof, I grew up where I was always watching my flanks. I was always looking my left to right. I was always trying to pay attention to what somebody wore. Were they wearing blue for crypts? Were they wearing red for bloods? It was always a scenario of knowing my surroundings. So guess what? When I get in the military and I'm in a hostile environment, it's not that hard for me to pay attention and see every little thing. It's not that difficult because I who practically grew up doing that. So therefore for me, when you have these things impacting you, it doesn't necessarily sit the same with me. So I'm sorry I digress just a little bit, but I'm just, it's really important to understand that when you're experiencing, you know, depression, like I mentioned, it's a depression is an element of isolation. These are the things that impact a person that it causes them to do that. Um, when you're isolating yourself, there's also, again, all related to depression in some aspect, but there's loneliness. The thing is, you don't even have to probably feel lonely. I bet you a lot of guys who are isolating themselves probably even have a girlfriend or they're married or they have kids or they're, you know, they got a, a, a friend not too far away, but yet they still feel lonely. That is again, something that you're taking internally and, and make it allowing yourself to feel and believe. Um, there's an irritability, irritability that goes with this. I say that three times, the irritability comes from where people are constantly coming at you. Say that person keeps asking you, hey, are you okay? Hey, are you okay? Oh my goodness, can you leave me alone? Because I'm choosing to be isolated. Now, I don't wanna take it out on you. I'm feeling irritable, I'm feeling frustrated, I'm feeling restless. Oh, why am I feeling restless? Because I'm not sleeping. Ah, really? That's just another thing, part of your depression. So again, we see this cycle of low self-worth, emotional numbness, loss of interest of things. I live on a golf course. I love playing golf. I have a golf cart, my own golf cart, which was a dream of mine in my garage. Nice, customed out. You know, I'm from Compton because it's, I got rims and everything. I think I take it out maybe, maybe twice a month, three times a month. I don't play very much golf. I play less golf now than I did when I lived in California. Now, I blame the weather. Remember, I talked about the weather here. I'm putting a lot of that on the weather. But there's, you know, I can get, I can get up in the morning and go and get before the sun gets really hot and, and uh, the humidity really kicks in. I could definitely do that. But I don't. The interesting thing about that is not even isol really related to isolation because that's one of the reasons why I like golf because I can get out there and be alone. Like I get in my cart, I get over to the, you know, the clubhouse, I check in at the pro shop and they be like, Hey, Dr. Brian. Hey, and I'm like, anybody out there? I mean, I already know nobody's out there because I live right here on number 10 and one's right next to it. So I can see nobody there. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Dr. Brian, go ahead. So I get in my cart and I go play. And for four and a half, four hours, it's, I'm just by myself out there hitting the ball, working on my game. But lately, I just haven't been doing that because 
it's not an isolation. It's an element of isolation, which is an, a depression, which is an element of depression. It's just a loss of interest, losing pleasure in the activities that I've enjoyed. <sighs> I know this. I know this. I'm an educated man. I've done my homework. I researched this. I wrote stuff about this. And yet I'm a victim of what I already know. And it's just not that hard for me to be able to say, Aaron, here you go. But yet I turn right back around and I do it every day, almost every day. Um... I just don't like being around people. And that's an element of PTSD. And, you know, the vets understand that. Um, So I don't, I rarely, rarely, rarely find a reason to leave the house. I'd rather, I'd much rather just be on my computer and working on my next book. I literally have a plan that I'm going to write probably two books a year. Especially now that I start my getting I'm working on my next doctorate. So obviously my dissertation on doctor is gonna be a book, but that's not gonna be for a little while. So meanwhile, while I'm doing homework, while I'm researching, while I'm doing everything, I'm gonna be putting my notes together and I'm gonna kick out some books on all the stuff that I'm learning. And again, if you follow my podcast, you know that I've recently talked about things such as the difference between therapy and coaching or psychology. I have my, you know, my comments regarding psychology and psychiatry and, um, you know, they're my thoughts and I'm open to my opinion and listen to what I said and you can like it or not like it. But for me, I want to know more about psychology because I love the mental aspect of it. And again, I could be a better coach by knowing the other side. So, and there's still elements of psychology that will actually make me a better coach. And I'm very excited by that. Um, one thing in addition to this whole concept of, of um isolation as it ties into depression is thoughts of death and suicide. Um, It's important to understand that when you continue to go down this this spiral, um, depending on how much it impacts you, will have a lot to do with how much you start to lose control or how much you start to lose yourself. Um, I believe for me, personally, not I believe, it's a fact that doing these podcasts, doing the research, writing the books, writing journals, doing the work that I feel that is allowing me to help others is probably the barrier for me that keeps me going and doesn't allow me to fall over. So, I mean, I always tell people, especially my clients and people I help, I'm like, you don't realize that you're doing more of a favor for me than I'm doing for you. So at the end of the day, we're all going to be happy and successful. We're all going to, you know, get through this. And, um, you know, it's always a good thing when I can finish a call and I know that I'm going to be talking to that person again. And when that person gets on that call, it's always a good thing. So, and I have calls when I'm coaching at all hours. If you, again, if you follow me, you know that I always have my phone on. On my website, draaronpbryant.com, you'll see under, I think it's services. I have a 24 seven hotline for VA crisis sent line. But I also have something where I tell um, people who are in crisis, you can reach me at any time. There is a chat box that tags my phone the moment you get into it. And I know that you need my help. So these are the things why I continue to do what I do because it's important. But I'm still a patient of myself by isolating myself in my office or in my studio so I can be able to do this. So, um, the one other component to, well, there's not just one other, but another major component to isolation. Um, I didn't mention this, but it's anxiety. Um, anxiety is 
has a lot, again, a lot of relationship to what I've already talked about. I mean, you got sleeping issue, physical symptoms, um, excessive worrying, feeling out of control. These are all things that relate to, you know, isolation, but as a component of anxiety. So when you feel that anxiety, when you feel like you're struggling to fall asleep because you cannot sleep, you have digestive issues because you're keeping any, everything internally, um, changing of eating habits. Oh my goodness, that was one of my issues. I had started gaining weight and realized that my that tied back into my depression because I was getting fat. And in Espanol, we say gordo. I was mucho gordo. Oh, I hated it. I did not like it. But then, you know what I did? Where you have some people where they have these vices, things that they do. Amazon loved me. It got to a point where the people knew they were like coming every day. I was ordering stuff from Amazon because it made me feel better to buy something. And then I would buy something because I needed to because I didn't like the way I looked and what I dressed. Because I like to be a little stylish. I grew up poor. So now I could afford a little bit. I like to buy nice things. So I got like right now, I don't know, 50 pairs of shoes. I got like, you know, all these different things and I have to stop. And I could stop if I would just maintain my weight. And my maintain my weight comes from, you know, having these really bad eating habits, which relates to anxiety and depression. You see how all that ties together? This is the things you have to figure out. And this is really difficult. So without, you know, trying to plug anything, this is where having a coach comes in. This is where your coach works with you and starts identifying these, at least a good coach. This is where a coach can help you figure out what is our goals? What do we want to do? What do we want to achieve? What do we want to accomplish? Let's figure that out. Let's let's come up with some strategies. Let's come up with plans. You know, coaching is not just about business. It's not just about, you know, the things that relate to uh, financial. Uh, coaches relate to everything and almost anything that is that has something to do with your personal preference. Um, more things related to anxiety could be excessive worrying, um, feeling out of control. Um, you know, you just feel like overwhelmed. You feel like you just, you know, I get that way too. Sometimes like I will just want to check out now, I'm not talking about permanently. I'm just saying like, I'm just done, which is one of the, which is, goes back to why if you follow me i travel a lot i like to just disappear which is you know it's unfortunate but i had to leave something i enjoyed doing which was being in a motorcycle club i was you know like a you know i was pretty i worked my way i worked really hard worked my way up to a pretty significant level i mean and one day i just walked away because i knew that i had to leave because it was holding me back from doing something that I needed to do. And that was to get out, get away. Now, you're probably thinking, especially if you ride, you're probably going, dude, Dr. Bryant, wind therapy, just get on your Harley and go. And absolutely, I mean, I was with the Buffalo Soldiers. We did that, like there's no limit. I mean, I could tell you the trips that I've done and you would blow your mind on how we go from one coast to the other. And we do that like it's nothing. I love that. But I was realizing that it wasn't enough because the culture, the surroundings, in all honesty, the people, I had to get away. I had to leave. Um, yes, this is in my second book. <laughs> and I do talk about this. But it was necessary for me to isolate and get in an environment that I didn't see similarities. And that was what was important for me. So removing myself so I didn't get reminded of the things that was challenging. 
you guys know that if you follow me, I use that word challenge. I don't like using the medical terms. I don't like using negative terms. I try to uh, say words that are a little softer, not to hide it, but just because I just feel like there's no point of beating myself up with terminology that has a strong negativity to it. So having challenging surroundings um, made it difficult for me to function, process, to live. And so I learned one day I went on a trip and then I realized this was one of the best things that I could do. And I, that's all I've been doing ever since. And I actually am very happy about that because that opened the doors for me to actually get continued studies. And I became a doctor through um, somebody I met and opened the doors for me to have that opportunity. Now, I spend, I, I just finished two years, year and a half, I think, of being a um, medical practitioner as well as instructor, emergency procedures, and now I'm going to um, oncology. I'm, I'm looking forward to learning about cancer. Well, I am learning about cancer and I'm moving to a new department. And these things are very exciting and I do it for free. And I just basically commit to doing a time period in this particular country every year and it is some of the best things and most rewarding thing i can do um again i talk about doing podcasts and communicating with you guys and it allows me to continue to push forward well so does that the last um just a quick story this is a, when i think about it i actually feel better so i try to remember this um the I think it was in my last two weeks that I was finishing up and actually I was kind of sad because the told me the director told me um, that there's an influx of students graduating. They won't need me at this particular location. So I thought I'm done. I'm not going to be staying here anymore. I thought, oh, well, I guess that's the end of it. And uh, we had a uh, young lady. She was in her early 40s. And she came through and she came for something else. I, you know, I don't even remember what it was she came in for. Now, I work in the emergency room side and I have students and I have a translator nurse. And this particular lady came in for something totally different. And my job is to assess. I work with I, I work with the students. We evaluate it. Um, my job and responsibility is to help the students think outside the box, because in Mexico, they have a very rigid way of thinking, especially the new graduates and so we try to explore other options things to think about outside of what they learn in the book um try to be more creative utilize common sense um utilize your skills your natural skills etc cetera, etc cetera. and so long story short basically we found out that this young lady she had cancer uh, well, I, I really wrapped that up really fast, but there was all these elements related to us getting to that point after we basically um, did some tests. We, we we had to go to another hospital, blah, blah, blah. I was able to go with them, et cetera. So long story short, we found out and she was ecstatic. Family was ecstatic. It was a whole thing. Uh, grandma gave me maybe some food, et cetera, et cetera, because I stayed there at the hospital. I didn't leave. Part of it is because I didn't have a ride back because we had to go back to another city, et cetera. But it was an amazing, an amazing thing. And it was because I followed a process of, you know, not falling in a stigma of what I've learned in school, but utilize common sense. I utilize my abilities of awareness. Um, all these different things just kind of kicked in from my background and for us to learn and find out and now I don't, don't I don't even I'm sorry if you e email me or write me or whatever asking what happened I don't know I had to leave I ended up that was like I said that was the end of my uh, period of time there but I am going back because that director of uh, did that particular hospital asked me back and I was able to find a new role because the previous role was not, they didn't need me anymore and i'm looking forward to this new role as i'll be going to but my point is that um you know i don't even remember my point oh basically having something to be proud of having some purpose having something to live for so this is not necessarily related to isolation but once 
you know, when you're talking about depression, you're talking about anxiety, finding something that would give you a reason, a purpose, some sort of happiness that could help fight just some of those elements. Now, I still isolate myself quite a bit, but I don't fall too deep in the elements of isolation. Like I already went through the different things. So I, you know, if I was to use a term of like swimming, I was tre I'm treading water. I'm definitely treading water. I'm not an Olympic swimmer and I'm definitely I'm not drowning. I'm just right there and I'm maintaining. And I'm maintaining because again, People like you who are listening to this podcast, I thank you because you're giving me a purpose to continue to research, learn, listen, and understand so I can continue to share what I understand. And hopefully somebody's out there will understand what I'm trying to say. So I say all that again, this is Coaching to Change. My name is Dr. Bryant. Um, go to my website, draaronpbryant.com. You'll see a lot of different information. Um, hopefully you'll reach out to me, check get me out on all my social media and, um, yeah, till the next time. And as I always used to say, you know, you know, not everybody's always listening. Um, the thing is that there's always somebody that's out there listening and it's not just me. So continue to talk, continue to speak up, continue to find somebody, but if you have to contact me, I'm here. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.